Hello everybody, Carl Schuf here from Snorkel.tv. Thanks for watching. Please hold your questions till the end. Uh, today what we're going to do is show you how to build this really cool masking effect that you're seeing on the screen. Where we're going to be using a series of movie clips to reveal an image. Now we're going to be using a for loop to load up a timeline max instance with a whole mess of tweens, which will allow us to play this animation forward and reverse it um, with really doing nothing overly complicated. So this is the final effect that we're going for and you'll see that these bars in a sequence reveal this beautiful image that I had donated to me. Alright, so let's close this and let's get into the file. Alright, what we're going to do here is uh, start off just by showing you how the FLA is set up uh, talk through the action script line by line and just uh, progressively show you how this thing is built. Uh, you'll notice on my stage that we have this image. It's in the image layer. And I also have this bars layer above it. And if I turn on the visibility of this layer here, you'll see what appears to be a big red rectangle. Well, this clip here is called bars. And if I double click on it to edit it, now inside of bars, you will see that I have a whole bunch of individual movie clips. I have these individual bar clips set up, all right? And each one has an instance name of bar 1 through bar 10, okay? So that we have these 64 pixel wide bars that are just positioned all in a row right next to each other. And we're going to programmatically tell each bar to fade in, thus masking and revealing the section of the image beneath it, okay? So let me just undo that little mess that I just did there, okay? So we have 10 bars here. The last one is called bar 10. The first one is called bar 1. Now, back in scene 1, I already have some code in here to make these this bar clip act as a mask for the image underneath it, all right? We're using cache as bitmap so that we can have a variable transparency mask. And we're just telling the image to use as its mask the bars movie clip. And inside of bars, those individual bars are going to fade in, thus revealing the image beneath. Now, if you're not familiar with this code here, um, I urge you just to take a little walk over to snorkel.tv. And um, here I have a tutorial on building a variable transparency mask. Um, you definitely want to check that out. You can just search my site for masking and uh, this tutorial will pop up. You can search right here. All right, so we're not going to go over that. We've done it before. And now in Flash, let's just show you how this works, okay? Let's move this red bars clip up. And when I test my movie out, you will see, if I bring it on screen, that you're only seeing the image where that bars clip is overlapping. So we have this big black void down at the bottom because that part of the image is not being revealed by my bars movie clip. Now what I want to do is sequentially turn all those individual bars on to reveal the image. So let's go back to my actions. And uh, we have some code here where I've already instantiated a uh, timeline max instance. And we set up a variable here called duration, which is just going to give me a quick and easy way to change the amount of speed for each one of these little bars fading in. Now, in order to target each individual bar, I'm going to use a for loop. Now, I'm not going to go into depth about for loops. They're basic AS3101 type deals. I'll probably eventually do tutorials on these basics, but right now I'm having too much fun with timeline max and tween light to really bother. So anyway, this for loop is going to start a counter off at the value of 1. We're going to count up to 10. And I have a trace in here that's going to count out the word bar plus the value of count. So you'll see that I'm pretty much dynamically creating the instance names of all 10 movie clips inside of the bars clip. All right. Using that information, now that I can do something 10 times, I'm going to set up a reference to each movie clip. I'm going to call it MC. It's going to be a movie clip equal to whatever we find inside the bars clip. And now in these brackets, I'm going to put in the expression that generates each name, the string bars plus count. 
All right, so now I have a way to talk to all 10 of those individual bars inside of my movie clip. And if I just trace out mc.name real quick, yeah, good job. That's going to happen every now and then. So what did I get here? Actions, trace mc.name, bars, bars. It's not plural here. All right, it's bar. Each bar is called bar one, bar two, bar three. So there we go. Again, those are the instance names of each clip. And let's do this. Now that we know what MC is, we're going to just very quickly tell each MC to set its Y property equal to, uh, let's do count times 20. All right, and what that's gonna do is just show you that now I'm telling each bar to just offset its Y property by 20 pixels, just as a proof of concept that my for loop is definitely telling all 10 movie clips to do something. Well, I want to do something much more interesting than that. I want to tell each clip to tween a certain way. So I'm going to add to my timeline a tween max. So I'm going to say timeline.append. That means that I'm adding to the current timeline in sequence. All right. Every time something is appended, it's going to go after the previous item in the timeline. And we're just going to do a tween max from, and here we have just the very basic standard tween max code. I'm going to tell the MC to tween for whatever the duration variable is set to. And let's just do a simple fade, all right? We're gonna start by doing an alpha of zero, all right? So we're gonna tween from an alpha of zero, and let's give this a little run. All right, and there you go. All right, let's close the output here. Let's watch that one more time. This is all the work right here. We're individually telling each bar to tween in succession. Now, what I want to point out is that each bar tweens immediately after the previous bar finishes. Let's just slow down the duration a little bit, and you'll see the first bar, second bar, third bar, fourth bar. And so, you know, that's pretty slow right now. But what we're going to do is talk to you about the offset value that we can pass into each one of these tweens that we're appending. And right after I close out all the values that are being passed into tween max, I'm going to add a comma and I'm going to put in a value of one. And that means that there will be a one second delay or offset after each bar fades in. So now we get the first bar, pause, second bar, pause, third bar, pause. And that's going to build all the way out. And we just have so much control using timeline max. Well, I want something a little slicker and more elegant. So what I'm going to do while we're running slow, I want to show you what happens if I put in a negative offset. All right, if I'm going to say negative 0.5, and what that means is that each subsequent tween will start half a second earlier than it normally should. So here, you'll see that while one object is tweening in, the next one already starts before it has finished. Since our tween is set to be one second long, maybe I will wait 0.9 seconds, all right? So that's gonna mean there's only gonna be a tenth of a second between one bar starting and then the next. And you'll see that they build out now really quick. And this effect, you know, that actually looks pretty cool as it is. You know, I don't really have any problems with that. It's a pretty cool effect but we're gonna tweak this even more. And let me just go back into my code. I don't know why my output's always popping up, that's annoying. But anyway, let's play with these numbers a little bit. Here, we're fading everything in, and I'm going to speed things up now. I'm gonna make the duration of the tween 0.5 seconds, and the amount of time 0.4 in between. So, the first item's gonna start, and then a tenth of a second later, the next one's gonna come in and we have this really nice progression here. All right, I'm gonna set my bandwidth profiler settings uh, to a T1 line. I don't like this big delay here. Boom, 
I should also set that image to be a little smaller, but here you go. So we get this nice progressive stagger going on of each one of those bars fading in. Uh, now it's really up to us. How creative do we want to get with this? Maybe I want those bars to move around a little bit. Let's go back in here. And now instead of just changing the alpha, I'm going to say, you know what? Let's change the Y value. Let's start all of these at a Y of 300. What's going to happen now is all the bars are going to shoot up. All right, and you could say, you know what? That's pretty cool, nothing wrong with that. Uh, but I really like the effect that I came up with. I want this to be a relative number. I'm gonna say tween from 64 pixels from where you normally would have been. And then all those bars appear to be sliding in from the right, and you get this really nice, cool effect. All right, we could add some easing to that, but right now, that's pretty cool. For a little additional bonus, all I'm going to do is go into the Timeline Max instance here, and I'm going to set some properties. I'm going to say that it's going to repeat indefinitely by setting that value to negative 1. I'm also going to say it's going to yo-yo, meaning it will tween one way and then tween in reverse. And I'm going to set a repeat delay to be one second. You know, I could have just used a for loop and bursted out some tween maxes just by themselves, or tween lights for that matter. But by putting everything into a timeline, I have this awesome control with the offset amount, telling the entire timeline to repeat, to yo-yo. Um, it's really insanely robust. So here, you'll see that my effect comes in, and then it eventually is going to go out. So we have this nice smooth in and out, and I didn't do anything really beyond throwing some tweens into a for loop and then appending them to a timeline max instance. So I just want to really nail the point home with you guys that once you understand some of these basics, you just put them together and you can do some really fun, cool stuff. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. Have a great week. If I don't see you before Thanksgiving, really enjoy that time with your families and with snorkel.tv and a little bit of tween light. You know, tween some turkeys going across the screen. Do something, all right? I'll talk to you guys soon.